We live in extraordinary times in the area of human-machine interaction. Oscar Pistorius, born in South Africa, uh, without fibulas, his parents had to make the very difficult decision to allow doctors to amputate his legs. Now he wears prostheses to stand, walk, and run, and I mean run. Here he's competing not against athletes with artificial limbs, but athletes with normal intact physiologies. Right here's Oscar. And what you'll see is that he wins this race. In fact, because of this race, the IAAF banned Oscar from competing in the Olympics because they argued that his prostheses confer on him an unfair advantage. It, it was appealed uh, and the ban was overturned. I was uh, an expert witness in the case. Sadly, uh, most of the people in the world suffering from cognitive, emotional, and physical impairments are not well served by technology. This gentleman, for example, a US soldier, was hit by a blast near Baghdad. As you can see, he's missing three limbs, an arm, and two legs. Um, this is uh, his mobility. Um, to me, this is uh, unacceptable. Next. It's a new emerging, uh, very exciting field called biomechatronics that seeks to advance uh, mechatronic uh, technological interventions that are implanted inside the body, attached to the body, and in, are in the environment of the human to restore function uh, from a pathology, or to improve the quality of life uh, for the elderly. One exciting area is neural implants, uh, an area where you can put small electronic package implanted into the brain. You can stimulate the brain in the future to treat such disorders as epilepsy, Parkinson's, and perhaps even depression. Um, what's being done today is, uh, in addition to that, is to extract motor intent. This is Matthew. He's paralyzed from the neck down. He has one of these implants developed by Cyberkinetics in the United States. Through thought and decoding of those neuronal firings, he's able to directly control the cursor on the screen. He's checking his email. Here he's controlling an external device the television, turning it on, changing channels. It's also been, so been used to control an artificial hand in a wheelchair. Next. Autism is a growing problem. This device was developed by uh, uh, Professor Picard at the MIT Media Lab. There's a camera and an earpiece, uh, and it informs the autistic child an appropriate social response. So that's, it's, it's a communication interface between an autistic person and a non-autistic person. We can also have wearable robots. In my lab, we're developing prostheses and exoskeleton. This is a powered ankle foot prosthesis. It's the first prosthesis in history that restores a natural gait pattern. This person is walking in a completely natural way, biomechanically. Look at his face. You can see he's very confident, very happy. He's only been using this device for 30 minutes at the time of this video. Next, we package the electronics in this box, and there's a small battery power supply under the pant leg. I'm wearing these devices. I'm an amputee myself. Two of them, they're fantastic. I'm able to walk with normal metabolic rates and at normal speeds. So this is now being commercialized by a company called iWalk, so it's, it's here now. In addition, we can imagine exoskeletons. This gentleman suffered a stroke, and he has what's called drop foot pathology, where there's a muscle weakness in the anterior compartment of the leg. This is his maximal ability to, to walk unassisted. So we build a robot. The robot wraps around his impaired limb, pushes on him, restoring symmetry between left and right sides, and his ability to walk at high speeds. We can think of robotic homes, for example, Let's make the carpet r robotic, a carpet that senses that grandmother is walking upon the carpet. And when grandmother falls, it inflates, becoming soft like a cushion so she doesn't fracture her femur or her hip, keeping her out of acute care, expensive acute care. We can think of personal robots in the home, such as this device that Cynthia Brazil developed at MIT, that uh, offer a social exchange between machines and humans coaxing humans into better healthcare uh, behaviors, to lose weight, to eat in a better way. We, uh, the notion of worldwide work, the current network of information flow may one day be extended to 
networked computers. In that future, you could have healthcare practitioners embody robots within the home. And that healthcare practitioner could be thousands of meters away. So healthcare expertise can come to the home uh, through this new infrastructure. So in, in, in terms of next, in terms of how can we make all these mechatronic devices uh, at a, uh, a reasonable cost, this is a fab lab advanced by Neil Gershenfeld uh, uh, at MIT. He's built fab labs across the world from Africa to Afghanistan. The fab labs have very sophisticated manufacturing capabilities so that communities can manufacture devices locally. So you can think of medical fab labs in the future. So to summarize, uh, we see a coming into the future a pervasive healthcare infrastructure comprising small and large mechatronics inside the body, attached to the body in the prim perimeter of the human, the environment of the human, to overcome disability, to improve the quality of life of the elderly. Thank you.